Miro just announced what might be their biggest update yet called Intelligent Canvas. I took part in the launch webinar and I took some careful notes of the most interesting features so that I can give you an overview in this video for what's coming new to the online whiteboard. Starting with maybe my favorite feature, which is Intelligent Widgets. Those are basically, well, widgets that are intelligent. Okay, what does it mean? That means that those widgets can live on the board canvas and they can interact with both participants and also data on the board. And I think this is a big deal because it completely opens up a whole new world of use cases for workflows and creating experiences on the board. For example, Miro will ship a pooling widget along with the release of this feature that allows you to create pools that you can just place on the board besides some slides that you have or some other activities to make your board more interactive and engaging. Other intelligent widgets include things such as dot voting, story points, or for example, avatars of the people that are currently participating on the board that you can drag around. These widgets are powered by a new technology stack that Miro is introducing for the canvas, which also enables third-party developers to develop intelligent widgets. And having seen how that worked out for Figma with FigJam, I think there could be a couple really cool widgets coming to Miro to allow really cool experiences and workflows to save time and create more fun on the board. Speaking of the canvas, there will also be a simplified UI. And here Miro is making a couple of changes to make the AI a little bit easier to work with and less overwhelming. I placed the current one and the new one side by side and here's what's changing. First of all, the AI button is becoming part of the toolbar. That's no surprise, AI is all over the place and Miro is making it also a bigger thing inside the whole UI. Then also generally all the toolbars around, like the board, they are simplified. For example, the search is now stashed away in a new dropdown for the board menu, then the back and forth buttons on the left sidebar are removed and then also the frame and activities button that we had in the left bottom before is now moving all the way to the right to the navigation toolbar. I really like these changes because I think it's always easy to make a product more complex and keeping it simple is great for user experience and especially those people that are new to Miro which can also be the case for people that you invite to a board. There are also changes coming to the dashboard in the form of an updated UI and something a lot of people have been waiting for me included and those are folders. Oh well, Miro has given them their own name and they call it Spaces. As far as I have understood it and seen in the videos, what Spaces allow you to do is to put together boards that relate to each other. So let's say for example, you have a project and you can put together all of the boards related to that project. But I think also, and that would be really smart, I think you can also include sections of a board in those spaces. Because often you have like big boards and then maybe a specific part of that board is relevant for projects project and then you can all group those kind of sections and boards together so that somebody can very easily reach all of that important information. Miro will also change some of the behaviors of how some tools open in the board. In the future some tools such as for example diagramming will open in a dedicated interface which Miro calls a mode in which you can then work in and have all of the essential tools for that use case at hand and the rest is kind of hidden away in a distraction free environment. And I think this is a great change because it helps you to focus on the task at hand and I can imagine there are some other use cases such as for example mind mapping or maybe interacting with an AI where this could be used in the future. AI was of course a very big topic in Miro's announcement and Miro is basically doing everything it can to make AI a centerpiece of the Miro experience. One of those features is something called AI sidekicks which are basically like assistants trained around a specific expertise that you can invite to the board to give you feedback, suggestions and advice. So they're basically like your colleagues but without a soul in sight. And these AI assistants have specific roles such as for example an agile coach, product leader or scrum master. This whole feature reminds me a little bit of those prompt templates that you can find for ChatGPT where you say I want you to act as in order to get ChatGPT into a specific role. And I think under the hood, Miro is basically using the same with the difference that Miro is using their own kind of trained model to do so, which they have put together in cooperation with industry experts. How well this works is something that we have to test out on the board itself, because it's difficult to see from all the nice demos if this is actually something that would open up quite frequently to get some help on the board. 
Another feature that is AI related that's launching are AI shortcuts, which are basically buttons that you can place on the canvas that can be triggered to perform a certain task, such as for example, to summarize a retrospective. I think this is a really straightforward feature that I can see myself using a lot, especially if you can customize the prompt that you pass on with those AI shortcuts. What I'm curious about is how you can also decide what kind of data is passed to the AI shortcut Will it be everything that is on the board or can you also, for example, mark a specific uh, part or section of the board where you can say, please take all of that data into this AI shortcut to generate a specific output. But how that will work, we will see that when the feature really rolls out publicly. And last but not least, uh, there's a feature called Intelligent Templates that Miro is launching. And those are basically smart templates that can create unique experiences, workflows, and interaction. And Miro calls these Intelligent Templates because that fits kind of the theme of the whole presentation. And at the start, there will be 12 templates available from Miro directly. And those templates are, for example, retrospectives or something like sprint planning. But you probably know the Miro verse, so you can expect that there will be a a lot of kind of community generated templates hitting the Miroverse very soon once this feature is publicly available. And those templates then will use all of the features that Miro introduced, such as the AI shortcuts, the widgets as well, to really create cool experience. And I can't wait to see kind of what the creativity of the community will bring together to create these intelligent templates. So quite excited for those. So these were my seven biggest features that I took away from Miro's announcement. And generally, I think that it's a good move that Miro is making here. Sometimes I'm thinking that maybe focusing too much on AI is a little bit too much going with the trend. But when this whole thing with AI happened and we all started playing around with ChatGPT, I was always thinking that this kind of chat interface that you have with ChatGPT, it's not the perfect interface to interact with an AI. Especially, for example, if you want to generate images, right? Because if you generate new images, they kind of disappear up in the chat flow. And I was thinking at that time, uh, working a lot in Miro, of course, that the canvas could be a super cool interface to interact with an AI. Because take the example of images again, if you generate multiple images, you can put them side by side, you can easily compare them, you can quickly start from scratch again, and it's kind of free floating. And I think that fits very well with kind of how AI works and how kind of the workflows turned out to be productive with AI, which is often kind of a bit of a messy process. So so, but that's it talking about Miro and AI today. If you like this video, consider subscribing to the account because we will publish more Miro videos in the future. So there's good stuff around the corner and hopefully see you then in another video. Bye-bye.